We pride ourselves that we can get to grips with our chosen craft and be ahead of our honeybees. Sometimes, however, we can miss the finer points. This is Gen Buzz. As most of us are aware, sound signals are used in communication among honeybees in several ways. Honeybees coordinate the social behaviour through an impressive number of individual signals, piping, tooting and quacking, many of which incorporate air or comb transmitted vibrations generated by the ability to disconnect flight muscles from the wings to admit the sounds you have just experienced. Queen piping are sound signals emitted by young queens during the process of swarming. The piping emitted by emerged virgin queens is called tooting. The tooting signal starts with one or two pulses of about one second duration with an initial rise both in volume and frequency. So here's the science bit. The first long pulses are followed by a variable number of short pulses around a quarter of a second in duration. The frequency rises from around 400 Hz on the day of emergence to more than 500 Hz two to four days after, whereas the number of pulses decreases from about 17 to seven pulses per performance during the same period of time. Before a primary swarm, a surplus of queens are raised by the workers the queen that first emerges from a cell announces her presence by tooting and also by a release of pheromone. Mature queens still confined within their cell answer the tooting with a distinct piping sound, the so-called quacking. When several confined queens are present in the nest, a chorus of synchronized quacking follows each tooting. Queen piping and tooting, and also quacking, are broadcast in the brood nest as vibrations through the combs. It is produced by operating the flight muscles without spreading the wings. In other words, being able to disconnect the flight muscles from the wings. It is radiated partly by the comb to which the vibrations are communicated by pressing her thorax against it. Toots and quacks last several seconds and are broken up into individual components. However, worker bee pipes last a second or so and consist of a single pulse of sound. Queens pipe only in colony reproduction while workers pipe in a variety of other circumstances, including foraging and colony defence in both queenless and queen-like colonies. In honeybees, the presence of several emerged virgin queens in a period after swarming is prevented by a delay of emergence of all but one. In this way, fighting between queens is avoided wherever possible. Some scientific research suggests that the worker bees can potentially stop the emergence of other queens by sealing breaks made by the emerging queen within the cell. Queen piping vibrations are transmitted through the comb and perceived by vibration detectors in the worker's feet or tarsi. An emerged queen announces her presence by pheromones and piping a series of pulsed high-pitched sounds produced by pressing her thorax and operating her wing-beating muscles without engaging the wings. Prior to going on the mating flight, a queen pipes frequently, perhaps to protect herself from workers rough handling, since the workers near the queen freeze while she is piping. Scientists have recorded that mated queens sometimes pipe before swarming, but the frequency of piping is greatest between the time the first virgin queen emerges after swarming, when the remaining fight it out for supremacy. So let's talk about workers and associated piping activities. Worker piping, previously reported only in hives, was observed in swarms as they prepared to lift off to fly to a new home. Pipers are excited bees, which scramble through the swarm cluster, 
pausing every second or so to admit a pipe. Many, if not all, of pipers are nest site scouts. A scout's pipe when it's time to stimulate the rest of the colony to warm themselves to a flight ready temperature of 35 degrees Celsius in preparation for liftoff. Of the many signals used by honeybees during this process of swarming, two of them, the stop and the worker piping signal, are not easily separated as both are sound signals produced by scout bees who press their bodies against other bees while vibrating their wing muscles. To clarify the sound differences between two signals, both signals from the same swarm and at the same time are compared in terms of signal duration, basic frequency and frequency modulation. Stop signals and worker piping signals are found to differ. But it remains unclear which differences the bees use to identify the two signals. What is clear is that the signals have opposite effects. Stop signals cause inhibition of actively dancing scout bees whereas piping signals stir up the colony. Scientific study into brief piping signals or stop signals of honeybee workers explored what situation worker piping occurs and to try and identify individual workers and piping behavior. Piping stimulates a colony's nectar foraging activity, demonstrating a causal connection between worker piping and nectar foraging. This demonstrated a causal comparison of the behavior of piping versus non-piping nectar foragers revealed significant differences. Examples being, piping nectar foragers spend more time in the hive, start dancing earlier, spend more time dancing and spend less time on the dance floor. Most piping signals, approximately 99%, were produced by tremble dancers, yet not all, approximately 48% tremble dancers piped, suggesting that a short piping signal and the tremble dance have related but not identical functions in the nectar foraging communication system. Their observations of the location and behavior of piping tremble dancers suggest that the brief piping signal may be one, slow recruitment to low quality forage source, and two, help to promote the recruitment success of the tremble dance. It has also been discovered that dancing bees produce sound in waggle and round dances. The dance sound signals are emitted as airborne sound by vibration of the wing muscles. In summary, piping, tooting and quacking is a complex form of colony communication and in-depth scientific studies have been carried out in an attempt to unravel this complex behavior. I have tried to extract the basic fundamentals of what is a fascinating subject and hopefully I have achieved this. More seasoned beekeepers have experienced this phenomenon firsthand, a privilege that I look forward to throughout my beekeeping career. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed episode five of Gen Buzz and all things to do with queens, quacking, and tooting in the hive itself. Um, I couldn't find anything on worker bee tooting or uh, any sounds that they make uh, in the process of hive life. It's a bit of a nightmare. I couldn't find anything on the internet at all uh, with reference to that. But there you go. Um, I'd like to dedicate this video to my wife and son and my friends who helped me celebrate my birthday today, being the 4th of October. So how to be 21 again? Not. Um, so I'm pleased with that. Being so far away from home is a good morale boost for me. So I thank them very much for that. All I can say is, is like, subscribe, comment as before, and I will see you on the next video. Cheerio now. Mm -hmm.